Okay, so back in November 2017, right after the iPhone 10 got released, I made a video called the four new iPhones for 2018. And that video did surprisingly well. I got a lot of positive feedback from you guys, and essentially, if you haven't seen that video, the four new iPhones for 2018 that I was talking about were the updated iPhone 10, the iPhone 10 Plus, the 6.1 inch iPhone Lite, or essentially a more affordable version of the iPhone 10, and finally, we had the iPhone SE 2. Now, we've had many reports that the iPhone SE 2 actually got postponed or even cancelled by Apple. By the way, I made a dedicated video just on that. And yeah, I mean, we haven't really had any leaks, any le new leaks in terms of the iPhone SE 2. However, we had many, many leaks on the three other three iPhones for 2018. And it seems like all three are actually coming out. So here's an update to the November video covering not the four, but actually the three new iPhones for 2018. Latest leaks and rumors and everything you need to know. So get us snacks ready because this is going to be one long but very interesting video. And let's have a look. Okay, so the first iPhone for 2018 is probably the least exciting one, and that is an update to the current iPhone 10. So this would have a very similar design to the iPhone 10. We're not really sure about the name yet, so no one really knows. Uh, my personal prediction would be that Apple would be calling this just iPhone or 5.8 inch iPhone, and then in the support page, they could have 2018 models. So and just like they're currently doing for the, uh, the Macs or even the iPads, but the main difference between the 2018 iPhone 10 and the 2017 iPhone 10 would be in terms of the bezels. Yes, the bezels are getting thinner. I'm not sure how many of you know this, uh, but essentially the iPhone does have a fairly noticeable border around the phone. Uh, this is the one that I'm talking about, and then the notch itself would also be getting a bit shorter as well. So Makotakara, one of the main sources when it comes to Apple leaks, they've stated just this. And then an image was found by Slash Leaks, and this one shows thinner bezels of the uh, on the 2018 5.8 inch iPhone. And then another design difference would be in terms of the color. So aside from just silver and space gray, uh, gold would be added to the iPhone 10 models. So this is very similar to the gold that we got with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus last year. Uh, the only difference would be that a frame would be made out of anodized stainless steel rather than brushed aluminum. So it would be it would resemble the gold Apple Watch uh, in terms of how it's going to look. And then there's also the red color that's expected to be included. Again, similar to the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and the product red colors, as well as a new color uh, a new blue color. So this was reported by Minchi Kuo as well as on leaks. Now when it comes to the actual specs, this 5.8 inch iPhone model would come with a brand new Apple A12 processor. The Apple 11 inside the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10, by the way, was already insanely powerful in terms of the performance. So it was actually faster than a 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. That's crazy and very similar in terms of the actual performance, single core performance to the Intel 7920HQ processor. By the way, that's inside the top of the line 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro. So that's crazy. I actually did a video comparing the video editing performance between an iPhone 8 and my top of the line 2017 MacBook Pro and the results were, well, I would just say very unexpected. Do check out this video, it's a pretty cool one. But yeah, the Apple A12 would be even faster than that. So French West website Cosmonach, uh, they've posted some alleged Geekbench 4 scores of the Apple A12 processor and they were about 10% higher when compared to the A11. So yeah, not a huge difference, but this is also the case with the Apple A11 leak that we got in March 2017. So it was significantly lower than what we ended up with in September. So this is what I believe to be the case now with the Apple A12 as well. And then the Apple A12 would also be based on a 7 nanometer process, which would actually make it, by the way, fun fact, the first 7 nanometer processor inside a consumer product. Fully manufactured by TSMC this time, uh, which according to Bloomberg's report, they've already started manufacturing the Apple A12 processors. And then being based on a smaller process means that these chips would be more power efficient than the Apple 11 chip, uh, which was based on a larger 10 nanometer process. And another fun fact, by the way, did you know that Intel still hasn't shipped 10 nanometer processors? Uh, Intel's Canon Lake is now scheduled for the end of 2019 or even beginning of 2020. And Apple has already gotten past 10 nanometers uh, and they're moving towards 7 nanometers. So yeah, this is why Apple's moving away from Intel and future Macs because, well, Intel's not really moving anywhere. Also, another fun fact, you probably know the thermal throttling issues that the new MacBook Pros have been uh, having. Did you know that the actual case of the MacBook, the 2016 MacBook design, MacBook Pro design, was actually designed with the Intel 10 nanometer processors in mind? But Intel hasn't really released that, so this is why, you know, the chassis wasn't the chassis wasn't really designed with a Core i9, uh, the Core i9 that we have right now. By the way, in case you missed it, I did a full 17 or 18 minute video uh, review of the whole performance and throttling issues of the new 2018 uh, i9 MacBook Pro 15 inch with lots of tests, 3D modeling, 3D rendering, video editing, and everything you need to know. So definitely check out that video in case you haven't seen it. And then another spec improvement would actually be in terms of the RAM. So uh, four gigabytes of RAM is being reported by pretty much every source for the 2018 5.8 inch iPhone. Uh, this would be up from three gigabytes 
And I know, 4 gigabytes of RAM seems like a joke when compared to, you know, some Android smartphones that actually have 8 gigabytes of RAM. But Apple has, or better off, they had the best RAM management on a smartphone with the iPhone 7 Plus. With the iPhone 10, that's no longer the case. The iPhone 10 no longer occupies the first spot when it comes to RAM management, mostly because the depth sensing camera requires more memory and, you know, that's basically always turned on. It always looks for your face. So 4 gigabytes of RAM would make actually a big difference for iOS uh, with the new 2018 iPhones. And in terms of the camera, we actually haven't had any specific leaks on this. But yeah, don't expect any three camera modules just yet. That's probably happening next year. We've had some reports on that. Uh, it's still going to be just two this year, just with a higher focus on low light. Okay, what else? Well, that's pretty much everything in terms of the 5.8 inch iPhone 2018. So an improved iPhone 10 with thinner bezels, a better camera, better performance, and a few new colors. So what about the other two? Well, the second iPhone for 2018 would be the iPhone 10 Plus. Now, I know it would probably not be called the iPhone 10 Plus, but again, my guess would actually be iPhone Plus for this one. Uh, essentially, this would be a larger version of the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10 Plus that we never had back in 2017. So Apple has this Plus interface on the iPhone 8 Plus, 7 Plus, and before, where if you rotate your iPhone in landscape, the home screen rotates, and some of the first-party apps, such as you know the calendar app, settings, notes, and so on, they rotate as well, and you get this sort of like an iPad interface with more options and details on the left, which is great. But we don't have this on the iPhone 10. And fun fact, if you go to the Apple developer page, you can actually see that the iPhone 10 has the same UI DPI in terms of the width as the iPhone 8. So the iPhone 10 is actually considered even by Apple to be a larger iPhone 8 instead of a smaller iPhone 8 Plus. And the iPhone 10 Plus in 2018 would be the first one to actually fix this. So in terms of the display size, the, um, the iPhone Plus 2018 would come with a massive 6.5-inch display, which would be about the same size as a Samsung Galaxy Note 8 or even the Note 9, just with an even larger display, thanks to the thinner bezels. And just like the 5.8-inch 2018 iPhone, the 6.5 would also feature that thinner overall frame compared to the iPhone 10 from 2017. Now, Benjamin Gaskin has also posted an image showing all three, and another one was posted by Slash Leaks that I mentioned before. Uh, so this is where you can see the much larger, how much larger the 6.5-inch iPhone would actually be compared to the 5-inch, 5.8-inch, uh, which is actually on the very left. Now, another change on the 6.5-inch iPhone would actually be the notch. So since we're getting a larger display, we would have more space on the sides, on the left and right sides of the notch for more indicators, which is pretty cool. So suddenly the notch wouldn't feel as much of a burden as it does now, since on the iPhone 10 you cannot see the battery percentage, or more importantly, you cannot see the non-disturb mode, which is quite annoying because you don't know when it's turned on. Um, unless, you know, you check from the control center, which is an extra step. So hopefully Apple does add the option to select which icons we want next to the notch. But yeah, other than that, this phone, this iPhone, would essentially be the same as the 5.8-inch iPhone 2018. So this means that it would come with the Apple A12 processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and the same upgraded camera. I mean, advantage you would be getting with the Plus, apart from the larger display, uh, would be the battery life. So that 7 nanometer process combined with the larger body, which allows for a larger battery in return, would result in the phone having basically the best battery life in an iPhone. Really hope that Apple decides to add, you know, dark mode with this, since it would extend the battery life even further Fun fact, I've actually made a video on how to enable dark mode in iOS 12 in case you've missed that. So what else? Well, that's pretty much it in terms of the iPhone 10 Plus. Other than that, the third one would be the iPhone that everyone is kind of expecting. So this is the middle one that we've seen uh, in many of the leaks. And this would be the 6.1 inch iPhone. And this is a very interesting device because in terms of the display size, it would be between the iPhone 5.8 inch and the 6.5 inch because, you know, it's coming with, it's going to come with a 6.1 inch display. But in terms of the price and the features, this would actually be Apple's cheapest offering for 2018. So this would essentially be the entry level iPhone uh, for 2018. Apple is still most likely going to sell the iPhone 8 or maybe even the 7 at an even lower price point, but this would be the cheapest one manufactured in 2018 and released in 2018. Now, Ming Chi Kuo actually reports that this iPhone will be priced around $700 to $800, uh, or around the same in the UK, because why not? Uh, followed by the 5.8 inch iPhone, which would actually be priced at $899 and then $999 for the iPhone Plus 2018. So essentially, the Plus 2018 would be the same price as the 10 in 2017. But obviously to keep the cost low of the iPhone Lite, I'm actually gonna call it Lite for now, we don't really know its actual name, um, but yeah, Apple is removing some of the features because otherwise, how could they sell a device that has a larger display than the 5.8 at a higher cost that, than the 5.8, that doesn't make sense. 
So one of the first changes that they're making is in terms of the display. So it won't be an OLED panel, instead it will be an LCD panel. And according to Digitimes Taiwan, Japanese company Nikia, or Nichia, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, uh, but this will be the first company to supply the LED backlight chips for Apple in 2018, especially for the 6.1 inch iPhone. Uh, and since this is an LCD display, I'm quite surprised to what all the leaks have been pointing towards. So basically an LCD iPhone with some very, very thin bezels, basically an iPhone 10 design, but this is not an OLED display, this is an LCD display. So this design is much more difficult to achieve with an LCD panel. But yeah, the bezels would not be as thin as the other two iPhones in 2018. And this was shown in pretty much all the other leaks that we've seen. Uh, they do appear to be about the same size as uh, the bezels on the 2017 iPhone 10 though. So they're not that thick. Now, aside from this, the iPhone Lite is reported to come with 3GB of RAM versus 4GB on the other uh, 2018 iPhones, as well as possibly even the Apple 11 chip from 2017 and the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 instead of the Apple uh, A12 processor. And I mean, even the Apple 11 is more than enough on a phone. That thing is a beast. And you know, you won't be using your phone to edit video or 3D modeling or anything like that. So you don't really need that much of a performance boost or gain uh, on a 2018 phone from the 2017 one. So even the Apple 11 is more than enough. And all of this is obviously done in order to keep the cost as low as possible. And then another change would actually be the frame of the phone. So instead of uh, the frame being made out of stainless steel, uh, it would actually be made out of aluminum, again, just to keep the cost low. And by the way, in terms of the colors, ming chi Kuo says that those colors would be exclusive to the 6.1 inch iPhone and not the other two. So I'm talking about blue, red, and even gold, uh, which I don't think is going to be the case. Definitely blue and possibly red exclusive to this new iPhone. But I think at least gold would make it to the larger iPhone Plus and the 5.8 inch 2018 iPhone as well. And then the Wall Street Journal reported in June that Apple is actually expecting this iPhone to be the best selling one in 2018, which I do see 100% happening. I mean, the iPhone 10 didn't sell that well, as well as Apple was expecting, and that was mostly because of the cost. It was really, really expensive. Again, if you think it's $1,000 is expensive in the US, outside the US, it was even more than that. So yeah, this was a crazy, crazy expensive phone. And then finally, one of the changes that we'll be seeing in all three iPhone models would actually be in terms of the power adapter. So this is something that I haven't mentioned in this video. Essentially, a number of leaks uh, showed a brand new USB Type-C power adapter, and this would be finally bundled with every single 2018 iPhone in the box. And essentially you would be getting fast charging day one without you having to buy a separate USB Type-C charger like you have to do now, as well as a separate USB Type-C to Lightning cable in order to do that. Especially since if you look at every single Android smartphone that supports fast charging, you know, it includes a compatible charger inside the box, but Apple doesn't really do that. Well, I guess the iPhone 10 wasn't expensive enough for Apple to include that. So finally fast charging on the 2018 iPhones. But yeah, I mean, in the end, for me personally, Obviously, I'm getting the Plus model myself because I've always wanted a larger iPhone 10 in 2017 and I didn't have that option. But in terms of which iPhone in 2018 interests me the most, that would be the 6.1 inch iPhone, the iPhone Lite. I'm quite curious to see how this would do in terms of the uh, in terms of the sales, how many people would actually buy this thing, uh, because, you know, this is going to be the most affordable iPhone in 2018, new iPhone in 2018. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this, all those three models. Uh, do you miss the days in which Apple only had one iPhone, one iPad, and so on? Because I think I do. But yeah, let me know in the comments which option would you prefer uh, and why. And definitely subscribe and enable notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more Lisa Numerous episodes like this one. Join the notification squad by tapping on that bell icon and you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out. But yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. Definitely give this a like if you enjoyed it, so let me know. Any feedback is really appreciated. And yeah. That this was pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm Daniel. Thanks for making it until the end. Let me know in the comments if any of you have actually made it until the end of this fairly long video. But yeah, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, in effect, signing out. Cheers.